The first feeling that I get is a great feeling of uh, well-being comes over me when I get in the water. I'm Bob Chalk and I live in Halifax and I make my living as a project director from, for a US-based software company. And on weekends, in, uh, mostly in winter, but in summer as well, I go and leap into the harbor and swim around and pick up old bottles and pipes and dishes and cast offs from the history of our city. I've dove virtually all of the shoreline from, from Shibucto Head to Heartland Point, I suppose. So I've uh, been to a lot of places in the harbor. It just kind of happened. Um, in that uh, I was diving once in Prospect, which is uh, an old harbor near here, just a small community. A bunch of us on New Year's Day, it was about 30 below zero, and one of the guys brought out uh, an old pop bottle, and I remember looking at it and thinking, oh, I want some of those, I want one of those. And uh, the most logical place to do it was in the harbor, so I tried it, and of course, uh, the idea of diving in the harbor horrified me uh, until I did it and was very pleasantly surprised to find that it's not at all uh, what people think. Uh, there is a lot of opinion out there on what is the waters of the harbor I like, but uh, most of those opinions come from people who've never been there. So the reason we uh, dive in the winter is uh, there is no boat traffic, just ships. Uh, you call for uh, permission. I put out a notice to mariners that there's diving going on. It's just us, a bunch of guys out having fun, you know. And uh, before we actually looked into it, but not in our wildest dreams did we ever think we would ever get permission to do that. When I was a child growing up in Newfoundland, it was very common for somebody, you know, a father to be upset at his child for a, for misbehaving and with a toy. And they, the common saying would always be, "I'm going to take that and throw it off the head of the wharf." as if to say it's going to blast into outer space and nobody will ever see it again. Uh, but we see it all the time. <laughs> I've seen everything from automobiles to uh, the tiniest little things like you see here on the shelf. Um, I e even pick up little nails and buttons and so on. So there, anything that exists above the ocean is in Halifax Harbor. Somebody dumped it in there at one time or it fell in or whatever. The harbor is full of everything. A lot of people think that the stuff that we get falls off of boats or was thrown in from a boat. It's true that that did happen, but most of it just went in with the household garbage. Uh, in the days when people, you know, most of the harbor would have been covered in private wharves. What I like about all of these items is that they are personal. So somebody owned this bottle of pop and they opened it up and they poured it out and they drank it and then they got rid of the bottle. It's very, very personal. So some of the pipes, for example, that I have, you can see the teeth marks in them, uh, which is very, I, I just like that. I feel a connection, you know, to a person that lived 200 years ago. Right, see if you can find Rui in there. Oh, really? James Rui. It was the father of William Rui, the designer of the Blue Nose. Well, he doesn't have names no at the beginning. Well, Sandra's a, uh, a very, I always joke and say she's a long-suffering dive widow, but uh, really she's uh, actually quite patient and, uh, and quite kind-hearted, really. Uh, so uh, she has often um, done things to support my diving, such as get air for me at the dive shop. I probably did more when he wasn't working at home because I used to regularly go out for air fills. All the boys are <laughs> jealous. I have a wife who gets the air for me. Uh, because it was harder for him, but now that he's working from home, he gets he, he usually gets his fills. Although I think I did one last did week. One last week. Last week. Yeah. In the olden days, they used to know me when I came in. Where was Bob diving this week? But I don't know them anymore. They've all changed. I had her tutored never to tell where I was diving. <laughs> Yeah, well, you don't like to give away your spots. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I think it's a great pastime for him. It's a great hobby. It's a stress reliever, therapy. It's great. He loves it. Yeah.
1898. This I'm not a historian at all. It was never my subject in school, never really all that uh, interested in history. Uh, but I like it that he's interested, and I mean, I think that his enthusiasm I enjoy. Yeah, usually I tap on the window there, and I say, and he says, or, so, one or the other. I, I don't have concerns when he's diving. I'm not really anxious about it. Um, probably in the beginning I was, but it's been a long time, so I've got used to it. And he's really good at estimating time. So if he says he's going to be back at four, He's usually back at five, two or five past. When it's a dry suit, I have to zip across the back because the zipper goes from there to there across the back. I have actually stopped strangers on the and ask them to unzip. They always look at you kind of like, uh, I don't know, what exactly are you wearing? Yep. So we're heading down to the arm, and it's, I must say, it's, uh, it's great uh, living so close that I can actually put my suit on in my living room when it's 20 or 30 degrees below zero and uh, just do the short dive to the arm, drive to the arm, and then uh, do a dive and come back home and uh, still do it all in relative comfort. I dive many ways. I dive alone. I dive with a buddy. And sometimes I dive with a group. Some of my best friends uh, have been my dive buddies over the years. Uh, I've dove with a lot of different people and uh, virtually all of them I'm still in contact with one way or the other. But uh, we're always alone underwater. Almost every time that I, as I'm going down, I'm thinking, oh, I'm so lucky to be able to do this. And, uh, you know, and you can't see anything. You know, when you're going down, it's just, it's not black, but there's nothing to look at. And then when you get to the bottom, you can see the bottom sort of coming clear as you're going down, 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 and you get closer. And it's usually the white thing, there's little bits of crockery and stuff like that. Maybe plates, you know, part of a cup. You see those things in the general sort of grayness of the bottom. And then you come down, 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 and you just kind of settle and try not to stir it up, you know, really careful and whatnot. And, but then the light comes when you get to the bottom uh, because it's reflected off the, uh, off the bottom. I've never had an unpleasant experience and I don't have enough time to do all the diving I want to do. I would really, you know, these bottles, I could sell these bottles and get many thousands of dollars for them uh, because there's an active trade. Uh, there are all kinds of bottle sites on the internet, for example, all kinds of dealers selling bottles. And some of the bottles I have here you know, I could get thousands of dollars for them, um, but I really have no interest in doing that. It's not going to change my life. It's not going to make me rich. I don't think I'll ever get tired of diving. I love it. Absolutely enjoy it. I get a great sense of peace when I'm doing it. I'm not the least bit nervous, probably not nervous enough uh, when I dive. So uh, it's very peaceful for me. Some people, you know, read poetry. Some people look at the trees and whatnot, and I go underwater and look at the garbage. 